Hey guys, and welcome back to the show. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about something that literally every single entrepreneur deals with um, on a pretty regular basis as well. It tends to like come up for us over and over and over again. And that is the question, what if this doesn't work? What if this doesn't work? And I think a lot of us um, think about this in terms of our business as a whole, but also we often think about it when we're working on something specific, right? So what if I launch an e-commerce store and nobody buys anything? What if um, I get my products into Loblaws and customers don't buy these products? What if um, I approach clients and they just like totally hate what I have to offer? What if, what if, what if, what if, right? And we could literally what if ourselves to death because we are constantly stressed out and anxious and worried about like, what if this thing goes south? What if this doesn't work, right? And I'm no different. I have this problem literally all of the time. It is such a bad habit and it's so toxic because you can always worry about something. This was something I was thinking about last night is like, if you want to be anxious in your life, in your business, you can always find something to be anxious about. There's always something that you could be like, oh, I got over this. I feel good about this now. I'm not worried about this anymore. But I'm worried about this thing over here now. Like there's a never ending stream of things for us to worry about. And so I wanted to share with you guys something that I do with myself when I get into this what if loop. So the first thing that I always ask myself when I'm getting into this loop of like, oh my God, what if this happens? What if this doesn't work? I always ask myself, is this productive worry or is it not? I remember learning um, when I was in school. So I went to school for psychology, love psychology. I know a lot of people take it because they think it's like just like an easy thing to take. Um, But I took it because I actually really, really love psychology. Um, Specifically, I love social psychology. So like the psychology of why and how people interact with each other. Um, Really like a big passion of mine super nerdy, but uh, no shame, no shame. Um, But so I remember learning this thing about stress. And so we all think of stress as being like just this awful thing that you don't want to have in your life. I think at this point in time, most of us know that stress is actually really bad for your physical health as well. Like there's a whole host of things that are bad about stress. And so most of us think, oh, stress is bad, but that's actually not true. Stress is bad once it hits a certain point. So there's actually, I remember seeing like this graph when we were learning about this in school and the graph showed that stress is actually beneficial up into a certain point and then it becomes really bad for you. And so it's beneficial up until the point where it causes you to take action and do something about the problem. Isn't that cool? Because it's so true, right? So if you think about like the stress that you have before taking a test, that's good stress because that stress is going to get you to study for the test so that you can pass the test, right? But once you've done your studying for the test, if you're still stressed out about it and you're still worried, well, what if I fail the test? That's not productive stress. That's actually just like really negative and really bad for you. And so I like to differentiate between like, is this, am I having stress? Am I worried about this? Because there's something that I need to do that I haven't done yet. Is there a problem to be solved here? Is there something that I could proactively take action on, right? So if I was launching an e-commerce store, maybe I would be stressed out thinking no one's going to shop on that e-commerce store because I haven't done anything about my SEO to get found on Google. Um, I don't have an Instagram page, so like I can't promote my online business. Um, If I haven't taken the steps and the actions that I need to take in order to ensure that people do actually find and come to my site, then yeah, for sure, maybe I should actually be worried about that and maybe I should do something about it. But if I have done literally every single thing that I can think of to ensure success on this thing and I'm still worried about it, that's not productive. That just becomes like the habit of being afraid, the habit of being anxious about things and worrying about things. So I like to ask myself, like, is this productive anxiety? Is this something that I actually need to take action on or Is it just me getting into this like loop of worrying and loop of anxiety? 
I think the other thing that we worry about that's not really effective at all for our businesses is we worry about what other people are going to think of us failing. And so if you are doing anything publicly with your business that you're worried is not going to go well, you have to ask yourself, like, am I worried about this because like I'm invested in, I want to see it succeed or truly and be honest with yourself. Am I worried about this because I'm worried that if it fails, other people are going to think that I look like an idiot, right? Now, if you are an entrepreneur, you have to stop worrying about what other people are going to think of you failing because this is just the price of admission. It's the price of admission of being an entrepreneur. This is literally, we are all in the business of trying things, seeing if they work, and if they don't, moving forward in a way that you think is going to work better. That's literally what being an entrepreneur is. Like 99% of our jobs is problem solving and pivoting and adjusting and adapting as we go. Nobody has the perfect answers, the perfect roadmap to have the perfect business. Like that doesn't exist. And I think a lot of times people will come to me as a business coach being like, this person will tell me exactly what I need to do to build a perfect business. And I'm like, no, what you need to do to build a perfect business is try a whole bunch of shit, figure out what's working, see what's not working and move forward. And like, that's it. That's literally the name of the game is problem solving. And so you have to get comfortable with that. You have to get comfortable with the fact that you are going to fail. You're going to fail publicly. You are going to be embarrassed by it. You are going to fail in expensive ways. You're going to lose money. Like it's just the price of admission, right? And so I think it's really important that we all get past that piece of like, well, what if people see me fail? It's like, if people see you fail and they're going to judge you for it, then they literally have zero idea what it takes to build a business. And so why at that point, why do you care about their opinion anyways, right? If somebody sees you fail publicly and they're like, oh, that girl tried something. She tried something and it didn't work. And like, Okay, so she's going to try something else and we'll see. The fact that you're trying and you're failing at things means that you're actually trying. You're out there doing things. Like if you wanted to have a life where you had zero possibility of failing, literally being an entrepreneur is not for you. It's not for you because if you want that life, then you need to go sit at a desk somewhere and do a job where like there's no risk of a failure, Like that's not what entrepreneurship looks like. It's, we're also afraid to fail, but honestly, like I think we need to get comfortable with this idea that like we're going to fail. We're going to fail at some of the things, some of the time. Like it just is the name of the game and trying to be perfect at everything is really just slowing you down. So you have to ask yourself that question. Like, am I actually afraid to fail at this or am I afraid that people are gonna see me fail? Okay, so let's say you have a real problem. You have a real problem, something that legitimately you should be worried about. This isn't a habit of having anxiety. You're not in some sort of spiral or loop. You're not worried about what other people are gonna think of you if you fail. You're just legitimately concerned about this because you haven't done what you need to do on this thing to try and make it succeed. So if that's the case, I ask myself, what do I need to do here, right? Like solve the actual problem. I think a lot of us, myself included, get into this habit of like just being anxious about something, but not ever actually solving the problem, right? And when I say it out loud, doesn't that seem kind of ridiculous? Like it does to me. I feel ridiculous when I realize that I've been doing this. I'm like, oh my God, I've been worried about this thing for the last like five days. I've been losing sleep over it. And literally I could have just said to myself, like, how do I solve this problem then? Right. And so ask yourself that question. Like if you're worried about something, you're like, what if this fails? What if this doesn't work? Ask yourself, have I done everything that I can do to try and make this succeed? right? Is there anything left? What other things could I do to try and make this succeed? Can I think outside of the box? And if nothing else, entrepreneurs are so good at thinking outside of the box and solving problems in very creative ways. So I'm sure that you can get creative about whatever problem it is you are dealing with right now and say, is there something else that I can do? Now, 
oftentimes, and it just has been the case for the issues that I've been running into in my businesses, oftentimes what I find is a good solution is actually to reach out to other people and get help or get partnership or something to that effect, right? Lean on other people. It's something that I have such a hard time doing and it's not because of pride or anything like that. It's literally just because I don't think to do it. I always think like, oh, I have to like do this myself. I have to promote this thing myself. I have to get out there myself. I have to, I'm always thinking that like I have to do everything on my own and it is not the case. It is just not the case. If other people have access to the market that you are looking for, go talk to them. If other people have the knowledge that you need, go talk to them. If other people can just straight up help you in any sort of way, shape or form, go talk to those people. And you might be surprised, like your gut reaction, I know mine is 99% of the time, your gut reaction might be, I don't know anyone that can help me with this. But I would encourage you to literally think on this. Think on this. Go through your Facebook friends list. Go through your Instagram friends list. Go through your LinkedIn list. Like literally with a fine tooth comb, go through and think who can help me with this problem. And you will likely find people that can help you. So start to think about creative ways that you might be able to solve this problem or other people that you could bring in to potentially help you solve the problem. Now, if you feel like you have done everything you possibly can to solve this problem, you've reached out to all the people, you've tried to get help, you've done all of the solutions and you're like, okay, I've done everything I can to make this work, to make this succeed. And yet I am still worried that it might not. I'm still worried, like what if it doesn't work? What if it fails, right? So That at that point is literally just your discomfort with uncertainty. I, you are not alone in this. I struggle with uncertainty so very hard, so very hard. I'm very much a person that likes plans. I like details. I like action items and I like to have certainty on what is going to happen. I like to have every I dotted and every T crossed. Like that's my comfort zone. I do not like uncertainty, which is like, it's wild that a lot of us who feel really uncomfortable with uncertainty do become entrepreneurs because there is so much uncertainty in entrepreneurship. But Here's the thing, you're not going to have certainty around this thing. You can't, there's no way for you to possibly know if the thing that you are working on right now is gonna work or not. It, you just, you can't, you literally can't know. You don't have a crystal ball, you can't see into the future. So like, how are you gonna know if this is actually gonna work out or not? You don't, you don't. And so you have to get comfortable with that uncertainty. I've been told that, a million times by a million different podcasters, a million different people always saying, get comfortable with uncertainty. And I'm always like, but how though? How? How does how does one who really dislikes uncertainty get more comfortable with it? And so this is the key thing that I do with myself to feel better about these situations. I literally ask myself, what if it doesn't work? And I don't mean in an anxiety way. I mean like, I ask myself actually, what's gonna happen if this doesn't work out? Like literally what's the worst thing that could happen if my e-commerce site flops, right? What's the worst thing that could happen if this client says no to me? What's the worst thing that could happen if I waste my time with this person and they don't end up becoming a client? Like what is the worst thing that's gonna happen? And when you actually answer that question, you realize, oh, it's fine, I'm fine, I'm not dead everything's okay. I didn't, you know, go bankrupt. I didn't lose my house. I'm not dead. I still have my family. Like everything's fine. Everything's fine. And so once you realize that it really kind of reduces your anxiety level when you say, you know what, if this thing happens, like there are things in our businesses that are no joke, right? Especially when you are running like a six or seven figure business, like it is, very high risk, high stress in a lot of different ways. So there are things that you might be worried about right now where you're like, Nicole, I'm not worried my e-commerce site is going to flop. I'm worried that whatever, I'm going to get sued by somebody or like something really serious, right? 
And I get that. I do because I've been there before, trust me. (laughs) But here's the thing. Once you say to yourself, okay, what happens? Like if that actually happens, what does that look like, right? And then you go through it and you're like, okay, well, you know, I might have to pay a lot of money, okay? And I might, you know, this and that and the other thing, right? All these things that actually might happen if this happens to you. Once you kind of like list them all out, you start to realize again, even though it would really suck if you had to do that, if you had to go through that, it would really suck and it would not be great. And it's going to be a hard year or two years or however long or whatever it is, right? Even though it would really suck, would you still be okay? Would you still be alive? Would you still be like, yeah, most of the time the answer is yes to this question, right? And especially when I put it into that context, if you have a relatively small problem compared to that level of problem, you might be thinking like, oh, this is actually, I'm blowing this way out of proportion. This is actually not a big deal, which I have done before as well. So ask yourself that question. Like, what if the worst thing happens? Like, what if this doesn't work? What's going to happen? There'll be a bit of egg on your face. Like, that's really not a big deal, is it? Because you're going to move on. You're going to move on with your life. And you will be successful as a business person regardless, regardless. And so this was actually the last piece that I wanted to pull into this conversation is um, a quote that I really love and has actually really motivated me like countless times, countless times over the years with my businesses. And it's a quote from Jay-Z, no less, please don't judge me for this, but it's a quote from Jay-Z and he literally said, the genius thing we did is we didn't give up. And it's wild because it's so true. So the reality of running a business is that you are going to try things and you're going to fail at them and you're going to fail publicly and it's going to hurt and it might be expensive. But if you continue to keep pulling yourself up and continue trying and figure out what didn't work last time and don't do that again, figure out what did work last time and do that more, right? If you keep trying and pivoting and adapting, you're going to get it right. There's only a finite number of things that you could potentially try to make this work. And so eventually you're going to land on the thing you're going to land on the thing that actually works. You are going to figure it out. Like given enough time, given enough persistence, you will figure this out. And so literally what, what most of the time when businesses fail, it's not usually because they went bankrupt or they lost all their money or like something really awful happened. Sometimes that does happen. You, you do hear stories of that. But most of the time when businesses close or fail, It's literally because the person has decided, I no longer want to keep trying at this. And I don't see that as a failure, right? Because it's not. It's not that you've gone through all these different iterations and you've tried so many different things and it's just not humanly possible to do this. Most things are possible. Most things are possible. I can pretty much guarantee the thing you're working on right now is possible. It is possible to build a product brand. It is possible to build a service brand. It is possible to do all of these things that we are all trying to do. It is possible. And if you can point to at least one other person who has done this before you, then it is absolutely, with 100% certainty, it is possible. And if it's possible, then that means given enough time, you will figure it out as well. So the genius thing is we didn't give up. If you keep going and you keep trying and you decide that you want to keep moving forward, you will figure it out over time, but it will take you trying and failing at things. So that is how I deal with that question of like, what if it fails? What if it doesn't work? What if, what if, what if? Well, what if, right? Keep going. Keep trying. Allow yourself to fail. Give yourself the grace to make mistakes. It's the only way forward. Okay, guys, that is it for this week's episode. Um, If you liked this episode, please hit subscribe and share this with a friend. Tell somebody else about it. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in our next episode.